and uh, uh, dear pastor is uh, doing their ministry uh, uh, in Dubai and along with uh, the secular job. So we have to pray for them. And uh, now this is the time to listen to the word of God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Praise God. Because I'm not able to see your videos, maybe because of some internet issues out here. I don't know. Uh, but uh, at least you are able to hear me and probably see me also. So glory be to God for all the technology and all the connections that God provides. Amen. I'm also super blessed uh, to be with you all today. This is 10 p.m., 10, 20 p.m. here from Dubai and uh, a land of uh, sands and deserts and all. So you can say today the voice of the one crying from the wilderness. And you know? also even when I'm speaking from here, uh, I believe that you all are doing well. You all are safe. We just heard about Ravi's mother. So uh, we will also, as a family, continue to pray for Ravi's mother's complete recovery. Uh, my uh, family and church uh, and uh, my greetings to all of you uh, this uh, day morning as it uh, is there, uh, especially to Pastor Sam Kuti and family for giving me this uh, invitation and to come and uh, to be with you for some time uh, with the word of God. It is such a great honor and privilege. Uh, I also want to take some names because we all know we all we are all part of the family. Amen. Hallelujah. I can see George Paul, uh, you know, brother uh, Joseph, George. Amen. I don't see Cedric. I don't know whether he's there. Uh, and uh, all our dear brothers, you know, uh, Sumant. Uh, every one of you, yeah, I see Emmy is there. Uh, God bless. I think you all are there because I, I'm not able to see your faces. The video is not uh, there. But I believe uh, today uh, it is a wonderful time to be in the presence of God because he's the one who searches the hearts. He's the one who knows our conditions. He's the one who, who comes to in all our services. He said, two or three are gathered in my name. I'll be there amongst you. Above all, my brother and then his beloved wife, my sister-in-law, and the three children that God has gifted them. Amen. Such a great joy. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. And once again, it is, it is my privilege, my honor, uh, that God has given me to come to you with the word of God. Pray for us, even as we are... Uh, in Dubai, uh, God has given us uh, uh, the job, the secular job is there, but above all, I think the spiritual work that God has given us is much more uh, bigger responsibility. We are uh, growing uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, winning more souls for Jesus. Even uh, in the month of December and January, the 1st of January, we had water baptism. Many people are coming to know the Lord here. Uh, the church is growing. We are raising uh, leaders uh, who can uh, lead worship, who can preach, who can minister, who can go out and evangelize. Uh, we are seeing the mighty move, the Holy Spirit in this region. And thank you all for remembering us in your prayers. And I, that's one thing that I would request you always, that please remember, we are seeing a mighty move of the Holy Spirit over here. And a uh, lot many people from uh, Nepalese, uh, Pakistanis and India, particularly Punjab side and all, they are all coming to know the Lord. And uh, uh, sometimes worship just goes one, one and a half hour. People are crying and weeping and mighty presence of the Holy Spirit coming in. Repentance, good decisions being made. And, uh, you know, more and more people coming into the church and the church going into the camp uh, to meet uh, different um, uh, new people, new believers and uh, praying for them. And God is doing amazing, amazing work through the hand of the people, the believers, the church members, you know, and every Friday when we meet over here, we, we come to hear the testimonies. Uh, even uh, in the month of September, my wife was tested positive and immediately after the very next day, she was completely healed from body pain, fever, COVID positive became negative, all glory and honor and praises to God. So this evening from here, when I minister to you from the word of God, I would, uh, I would ask you all to pray that the word of God will challenge you today. The word of God will wake you up from the 
inside and uh, and the word of god will push you uh, into the direction that god wants each one of you to move forward amen i always believe in one thing that attending a service is not that important but i mean being changed being changed during the service is very much important amen the water was there many people were coming we know that amen but you know the man who was there for 38 years there was no change in him he always had only one thing to say that nobody is there to push him amen but today let me tell you the holy spirit is there to for us he is there to push us amen let's not wait for some man to come but let's ask the holy spirit to come and change us transform us these are the end of the end times amen so therefore it's important to wake up to rise up and to go forward amen and do something for the kingdom of god amen and therefore i want to bring out this message that god has put in my heart you know before that can we all close our eyes and we will have a word of quick prayer for the word of god to come to us amen our most loving heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful opportunity you have given us lord after a beautiful worship father god amen as we look into the word of god i pray lord that you will speak to each one of us in a fresh way in a way father god that you want us to hear the message lord not just to be hearers but to be doers of the word of god Lord I pray Father God for everyone Lord hallelujah especially Lord for Ravi's mother also we pray right now let the word go and heal her right now in Jesus name Father God let the deliverance be felt in the body amen rise up and walk in Jesus name Father God bless every one of us let the word be from you let the word be for your people Lord and let your people bear much fruit for thy kingdom Lord Thank you Lord for answering our prayer in Jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 praise god turn with me uh, your bibles uh, if you have brought your bibles along with you amen uh, hebrews chapter 11 a common uh, passage hebrews chapter 11 just to give you an introduction of the word that our god has put in my heart is just once one sentence over there hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and the verse 2 is the key verse for by it the elders obtained a good testimony amen for by it the elders obtained a good testimony amen i want to bring to you today three important areas of our life of our of a believer's life which is very much important for god and which is a area where the devil has in a in a uh, in in much uh, uh, by far has been very successful i mean the devil i mean to corrupt many believers today many believers there are three important areas of a spiritual walk with god and that's what the lord has put in my heart today that the church of god must realize and correct wake up and move on i mean if we understand i mean these three areas which is very critical for a god i mean in our life when he looks at our uh, spiritual life so i want to bring to you i mean three areas of spiritual walk with god and i want to put before you three examples from the same chapter of how these three people i mean excelled they became an example for us and as we read here obtained a good testimony amen they obtained a good testimony from god amen not from man they pleased god amen so each one of you as an individual person must live to please god amen must walk to please god amen and to obtain a good testimony when we all come one day before god amen hallelujah and that is the uh, uh, the joy that we're going to have one day when god 
testifies about you, he testifies about me. Amen. We all know the scripture. Well done, my good and faithful servant. All right. But this is the three areas of every believer where the devil tries his best to corrupt. Amen. And that's where we need to be very careful. So let's go on with the word of God now. Amen. Come to verse 4 of chapter 11. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. Here is the Bible talking about worship or sacrifice of Abel. You all know about Abel. Abel, amen, was born to Eve and Adam, amen, after the fall. Cain and Abel, right? After the fall, when Cain and Abel were born, amen, they were not born in Eden. They were born out of Eden, right? And in faith, we see the Bible records, amen, the sacrificial worship of Abel. While there were two brothers, Amen. Going into worship, the Bible records Abel's sacrifice as most excellent. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know whether you can say that after me. Amen. Repeat it after me. Hallelujah. Most excellent sacrifice. You know, it's a superlative word over there. That means it is the most perfect one. Nothing can be better than this. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is at a time. When they are not in Eden, but they are in the wilderness, they are working. Father is a tiller of the ground. Cain is a farmer. Amen. And with some sheep, Abel is raising some sheep. But you know, when from since childhood, and that's my imagination. Hallelujah. Childhood onwards. Both Cain and Abel might have asked dad about things that happened inside Eden. And many a time, I mean, Adam might have given many stories about how they walked with God, how God came down to meet them. Hallelujah. And, and, and the beautiful stories that he could communicate to Abel and Cain. But dad, what happened after that? What happened? I mean, it was wonderful days. I named all the animals. I named all the creeping creatures. I named all the, you know, uh, fishes in the sea, the birds and everything. It was wonderful time that we had inside Eden. But dad, what happened after that? After that, sin came in. And because of which Adam said, God removed us just because of eating one apple. You know, Abel had all the uh, question to ask Adam. Dad, just because of one sin, why could, why did God do this with you? Why did not God give you another chance? How cruel is this God? How bad is this God? I don't want to come to church anymore. I don't want to visit and see worship this the Lord anymore. Abel had all the reasons not to worship God. But you know what? Hallelujah. Abel, hallelujah, understood one thing. It is God's mercy. It is his sovereign will. Hallelujah. He is a fair God. He is a fair judge. Hallelujah. Because he allowed my parents to do everything that they wanted except for one thing that they should not eat fruit from the tree which of the knowledge of good and evil, which is as good as eating the fruit of sin. Everything, authority was given, grace was given, they were covered with glory. Everything was given to my parents. I mean, just one thing it was told not to do, and that's what happened in Eden. People of God understand one thing. Abel had all the reasons, you know, but the Bible says, if you come to Genesis chapter 4, amen, hallelujah, if you come to Genesis chapter 4, it says over here, verse 4, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock 
and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Abel brought the best for the Lord. Even at a time when there was no example of worship. Even at a time there was no worship leader. There was no example. There was no guidelines given. But Abel brought the best that God had given him. He gave the best to God. And the best of the fat portions. Amen. And God looked at the man. Abel. His attitude. His heart. Amen. God does not look at the guitar strings. He looks at the strings of your heart. Amen. He looks at the voice of your heart. He looks at the worship that comes from your heart. Amen. And God looked at Abel and God loved him. And God spoke about Abel. Imagine this happened in Genesis chapter 4. It was recorded somewhere in heaven. And Paul or the writer of the book of Hebrews. He brings it exactly that. It was one of the most excellent sacrifice. Today all of us worship. But let me tell you. Sacrifice must cost you your best. Sacrifice must cost you something. When you bring it to the Lord. Your worship must cost you something. Today we are all in our you know, comfort zones and we are worshipping. Abel brought the best facts. He brought the firstborn. Amen. He brought it before the Lord. And the Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering. By faith, Abel worshipped. Hallelujah. Amen. Without seeing God, he worshipped God. Without having any one predecessor. You know, he worshipped God. He praised God for who he is. He gave the best to his God. And God, amen, talks about Abel's worship and sacrifice as the most excellent sacrifice. And I pray that God speaks about your individual sacrifice and worship as the best one in the times such as this. Can we examine our own worship? What, how do we come before the Lord? How do we present ourselves before the Lord? What do we bring before the Lord? You know, the Bible says, God is close to the one who is of a broken heart and of a contrite spirit. When you worship the Lord, Jesus says, Father is looking for one such as this, who will worship him in spirit and in truth. People of God, may your worship Please, God the Father in heaven, may your worship, hallelujah, touch the heart of Jesus. May your coming, may your worship, may your sacrifice be pleasing, holy, and acceptable, as it is written in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I want to talk to you about one more person, amen, who is very close to my heart, amen, about his worship. If you would turn some pages of Genesis from chapter 4 to chapter 18, you come to know about a man called Abraham. Everybody knows Abraham, the father of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham, amen. The Bible says about how he gave, about his giving to the Lord or for, or for, 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 the, for the love that he had for God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 18, then the Lord appeared to him by the Terebin trees of Mamre, and he was sitting in the tent door in the, in the heat of the day, in the heat of the day. It's very hot during summer in the Middle East, in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and he looked and behold, he saw three men standing by him. He saw them, he ran out to meet them. He bowed himself to the ground. Now Abraham was a rich man by then. And when he bowed himself to the ground before strangers, look at the, the service that he's giving to strangers. And he said, my Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. And after that, you may pass by. 
much as you have come to your servant. He says about a morsel of bread, washing his their feet, a rich man now. Amen. He shows his humility, his love for strangers. He talks about morsel, but what he actually does, you should see, read the next verse. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meat, meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender of good calf, gave it to the young man, and he, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and, and, hallelujah, and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. He said, I will bring you a morsel. But he brought more than that. He brought a calf. He brought butter, milk. And he's standing there and asking, what more can I do for you? You know, like a servant. Amen. This is the beauty of the way Abraham, Abraham served. You know, we are all called. Amen. Hallelujah. Saved to save others. Saved to serve others. Amen. And we learned this attitude from Abraham. Three strangers coming and he going, hallelujah, forward to them, bowing down before them and making, compelling them to come and serving them. Not knowing that one of them is actually God himself. But he couldn't know, he, he didn't knew that. But immediately after that, he receives that next year, by this time, Sarah will give birth to a boy. Hallelujah. The promised son will be born. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, let our worship, amen, hallelujah, be pleased by God. Amen. And that you and I, we may obtain a good testimony today. May God rejoice in your worship. May God come down in your worship. May God come and bless you and give you a promise today. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what is your need. I don't know what you are going through. But Lord, hallelujah, I pray one thing. That God will give you a promise. Hallelujah. In the midst of your pain. In the midst of your lack. When you still worship God. Amen. Give him the best time. You know, problem with all of us is that, amen, we, we give God time after doing all the other things that we finish. And then the remaining time we give to God. We have to reverse it. One, one believer said like this, hallelujah, today I have a lot of things to do. I have a lot of things to do. Let me begin the day in worship, in praise, in glorifying and praying unto my God. Praise God. You know, the psalmist said this, you know, if you, if you, if you read the, the, psalm, the psalm, you know, it says there, I mean, in 100, Psalm 119, verse 164, seven times a day I praise you. That is how our forefathers praised God. Seven times a day I'll praise you. From seven, we reduced it to three. Morning, afternoon, and evening. And when times pass by, we reduced it to only morning and evening. And now, when we get time, that's when we worship and praise. People of God, let's come back. Earlier in those days, when we were little kids, we know that, you know, people, especially in Kerala and Bombay and wherever we are, you know, they just ask each other, how is the gospel meetings in your area? How is the gospel spreading in your area? They used to, whenever they used to talk to each other, they used to ask and inquire with each other, how is the gospel going in your area? Praise God. As times pass by, people stop inquiring about the gospel. They ask Indra Visheshim, what is news? The good news is forgotten. And people ask them now, what is news? And now, even bad than that is people ask, whether you have sugar, whether you have pressure, whether you have jaundice, whether you have this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. No. You know, not that's not that the way. You know, we need to come back. We need to come back. Hallelujah. And examine our own self. 
Lord, amen, help me. Give me a heart to worship you. To worship you all the day of uh, my life that you have given me. Amen. So Abel, amen, worship and his sacrifice is teaching us something. And God speaks about his worship. That's what we read in Hebrews chapter 11 about his sacrifice. Hallelujah. God testified which with which he obtained witness that he was righteous. And God testifying of his gifts. And through it, he being dead still speaks. Worship of Abel is still the standard that God expects from children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He still speaks to each one of us. Very quickly, we will go to the second. So the first thing that the devil tries to attack you is your sacrifice, your worship, your praise. Amen. And therefore, children of God, be careful because we have a standard kept in the Bible. Amen. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Amen. Which is holy and should be acceptable. And that is your reasonable service. Amen. And that's what God expects from each one of you. You know, we worship God with all our mind. So if you are in the worship service and if your mind is going towards the clock, if your mind is going to see who's come to the room, is not, then you are not being attentive. The Bible says when Paul was ministering and Lydia was attentive, God opened the heart of Lydia. Amen. So when you are in church, and if you're examining others or if you're getting distracted, you need to come back to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me to concentrate, to focus my attention upon you. Amen. So that I may worship you. Amen. Irrespective of what goes around, that my worship, my time that I spend before you will be quality. And where God comes down. You know, God came to uh, Eden and he asked for Adam. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, where God says, Adam, where are you? Where are you? That question was not a question of information. That question was a question of confirmation. I appointed you as a worshiper. Where are you? I appointed you as a gardener. Where are you? I appointed you when to protect, to be fruitful. Where are you? That was a question. Amen. Which went deep inside the heart of it. God definitely knew where Adam was. But that question had a more spiritual meaning behind it. So today the Lord is asking each one of us, including me, how has been your worship today? How has been your worship last week? How what are you going to do about it if it is not the right way in the coming days? Today, take a decision. Take a decision before God. Make a commitment before God. Because we have an example of how our elders obtained good report. Amen. Going forward quickly. Amen. Let's come to the second person. So first is worship. And the second is your walk. Your walk, your lifestyle. Amen. Verse 5. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have an example over here. Of a man who is of the seventh generation from Adam. Who pleased God by walking with God. He diligently seeked God and he found God. Amen. Where did he find, find God? Not in Eden, but outside Eden. You will find God if you diligently seek him, even in your office, even in your home, even while you are driving. 
If your heart is seeking God, you will experience the presence of God even when you are driving. How many of you believe that? How many of you have experienced that? I don't know. Amen. But you must experience it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Enoch walked with God. The Bible says in Genesis, amen, after 65 years of his age, Enoch began to walk with God and he walked with God for 300 years. Many of us do the reverse. We will walk according to the world 300 years. And when we are old and do good for nothing, then we start to walk with God. Because now everything is done. No. Enoch at young age, 65, you know, when he was, he turned to God. He decided to walk with God. When at the time when no one was walking with God, all had gone astray. No one was walking with God. Enoch decided that he will walk with God and he obtained a good testimony. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I am so personally challenged when I look at these, you know, heroes of faith. How can they walk with God? You know, the Bible says by faith, by faith, by faith. Today, I want to challenge you. You can walk, hallelujah, in Sacramento with God by faith, by faith, by faith. You don't have to preach a big sermon to bring someone to church. Your life becomes a sermon. The way you walk, your lifestyle is a sermon. The way you talk, the way you manage things, the way you speak to someone, you are different. You are different from this generation. You are a chosen one. You are a royal priesthood. You are walking with God. So please carry that dignity and also be humble. Enoch walked with God. And the Bible says that Enoch had sons and daughters. Enoch had his work to do. Enoch had a family. Enoch raised a family. And he walked with God for 300 years. So much so that God used to come down and walk with him in faith. He didn't see God. That one day God said, enough of me coming down. I want you to come up and walk with me in the heavenly realms. I can imagine Enoch's friends. You know, the Bible has, Bible talks about five Enochs. One is a, one is a city named by Cain's, uh, Cain himself, who named it for, after his son. There are so many Enochs in the Bible, but all know only one Enoch who walked with God. And Enoch pleased God. One day God said, Enoch, I've been walking with you. Now I want you to walk with me. Come up here. And Enoch was taken up. His friends were inquiring. No one could find him. His neighbors were looking for him. No one could find him. Enoch walked with God. When the world was walking totally opposite. Enoch walked with God. Can you be the Enoch of this generation? Can you be the Enoch of this generation? May God give you the strength and the courage, you know, to take this decision. Lord, I want to be the Enoch of this generation. Amen. Enoch pleased God and he gained a very good testimony. Hallelujah. And you know, the Bible says in Jude verse 14 and 15 that Enoch prophesied about the end time judgment. That means that says one thing to me. If you're walking with God, you will prophesy. If you are walking with God, you will not prophesy about, about prosperity, but you will prophesy about the coming judgment. If you are walking, if your walk is holy, if your walk is with God, you will prophesy about the judgment that is to come. May the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be pleasing and acceptable to God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let your heart, your mind become the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
that you don't be like the people of this world, but you be the Enoch of today. No matter what, I walk with God. And let me tell you, there is great joy walking with God. I know for sure, Holy Spirit has a good sense of humor. Because when I walk with the Holy Spirit, amen, I always see the Holy Spirit making me smile. Hallelujah. Amen. He always keeps your heart, you know, light so that you're always joyful. He never allows stress to come to you. He never allows worries to come to you. He keeps you always light, 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 light. And one day the Lord is going to come to take all the Enoch's. And that's the day that we are waiting for. Amen. Walk with God. Amen. Third and the final one, your work. So first was worship. The devil will try to corrupt your worship. The devil will try to corrupt your walk. Be careful. Be careful. Amen. Be very diligent. And the third one is your work. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Amen. Let's read that portion. Amen. About working for God. By faith. Verse 7 of chapter 11 Hebrews. By faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the serving of saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and because and became here of the righteousness which is according to faith. You all know Noah. I'm not going to go into the details of it. A time such as as the time of Noah is the time now. Noah built an ark. At that time, no one had seen what is an ark. Divinely warned. God saw that everyone, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, the Lord saw that everyone is evil. Everyone is wicked. Everyone is going their own way. But the Lord saw Noah. And the Bible says, Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah was a righteous man in his generation. Noah pleased God. He walked with God. And God decided to give Noah one message. And God told him, prepare an ark for the saving." Of your household, your people, and anyone who comes in will be saved. That was the original plan of God. Amen. But only birds and animals. But in the process of time, he took, you know how many years Noah took to build the ark? 120 years. He got one message and worked for 120 years. We listen to messages 120 years, but we don't work for God even for one day. That is our problem. We have so many messages. We receive so many messages. But we don't walk. We don't work. We don't worship the way that God wants us to worship. And that's the sad part in today's Christianity. I mean, everyone has gone their own way. But God found one. May God find you. May God remember you. May God call you. And give you a plan for the end time revival. I'm telling you there are many people there. Hallelujah. In Sacramento. Amen. You know even we experience here in Dubai. There are many people. Amen. Who want to know the living God. Who are looking for someone who can come and pray for them. I get calls from Saudi. Amen. People whom I've never met. They got my number. And they asked me to pray for them. On WhatsApp. We just pray and we send the prayer through WhatsApp. Many people come over here. Their visas have expired. I mean, fines are upon them. Heavy, hefty fines. They don't know where to go. Who can save them? They come to know somehow. Hallelujah. Amen. And they come in touch with us. We say one thing, what Peter and John said. Hallelujah. Silver and gold, we have none. But what we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. They accept Jesus as their savior. We give them the gospel. That is the best news that you can give. They receive Jesus. Last Friday, a brother testified 
I mean, that 4,500 dirham that was just fine, fine over him. I mean, completely, completely, I mean, gone. I mean, taken away. I mean, hallelujah. No fine to be given. I mean, once you know Christ, you are free from every bondage. You are free from every kind of pain and struggle. Amen. The Lord provides for those who call upon his name. Noah worked for 120 years on one message. His sons grew before him, you know, Sham, Hamam, Jafet. They said, Dada, let's make it this way. Let's make it this way. Let's put this word, that word. He said, no, God has given the plan. You may be studied in university. You may be studied, you know, in the best college. But Dada said, no, this is from God. Let's make it exactly like it is. Because it has to one day float on water. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you working on? Are you working on for the saving of your family? Are you working upon saving of Sacramento? Are you working on saving many souls? Hallelujah. What are you working upon? Have you got a message from God? Amen. Are you a doer of the word of God? Ask yourself. Are you reflecting Christ? What are you doing today with the message that God has given in your heart? How many have you attracted to Christ? How many is coming to know Jesus through your life? Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you, amen, hallelujah, have been able, amen, to go out and say, Lord, for you, I will win one soul today. I need to win souls for the Lord today. Amen. Work in a way. Hallelujah. That many people may see your work and glorify your father in heaven. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15, you are a fragrance of Christ. You are a fragrance of Christ. What uses the fragrance if it is kept in a bottle, cocked? Break it. Let the fragrance go out. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 10, 20. Do you not know that you are bodies of the temple of the Holy Spirit? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, you are God's masterpiece. God has been making you all these years into a masterpiece. You carry the image and likeness of Christ. Each one of you, hallelujah are uniquely designed for great purpose. Each one of you are supposed to be an evangelist. Each one of you to go out and win for people, win souls for Christ. You are the chosen Noah from these end times when there's so much wickedness all around. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we, can we just acknowledge and say, Lord, amen, the time that is left, the time that you have given me, let me not get distracted from the work that has been given to me. He took 120 years to make something which he had never seen before by faith. By faith, he made something that he had never made before, never seen before. And only knew one thing that judgment is coming. And he worked on it. He worked on it. And the Bible says that he obtained a good testimony. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Three areas we covered today. Amen. One is your worship, your sacrifice. Malachi says, you know, not to bring corrupted. Or bad sacrifice before God. God rejects all that. May your body be the living sacrifice. In the altar, the wood was always supposed to be burning. In the Old Testament, that wood is your flesh. It has to be cut into pieces every day. Your desires, all the, all the lust and all the sins and all the things of this world. Cut it off, cut it off, put it on the fire, put it on the wood. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your, let your body be the living sacrifice. Amen. I'm closing. I'm, my time is up. Hallelujah.
Amen. Let's learn from Abel to offer the best sacrifice. Let's learn from Enoch. No matter, no one walk with me. I will walk with you, God. I will walk with you, God. Noah proved, uh, Enoch proved that God still can walk with man outside Eden. May you prove that. Amen. And for your family who has not been saved yet, amen, see your face, see your lifestyle, see your life, see your worship, see your prayer, and they come to know God. Amen. Hallelujah. May your life reflect, amen, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Heaven is inside of you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Amen. Rivers of living water must come out of you. I was talking to my church. Even when you give a praise the Lord to someone. Amen. Let your praise the Lord be felt. The power of the move. The Holy Spirit be felt. When you walk in your office. When you speak to your friends who don't know Jesus. Let them come to know that there is something different in you. Which they don't see in anyone. They will inquire. They will ask you to pray for them. And may you pray. And may God bring a change in someone's life because of your prayer, your one prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't want to make a long prayer, but your shortest prayer bring a greatest change in someone's life. Amen. Be the Noah, be the Enoch, be the Abel. Amen. Be careful. The devil is against your worship. Amen. Because, hallelujah, if you don't worship properly, I mean, it's just a waste of time. Amen. If you don't walk properly, you will fall. And if you don't work properly, amen, I don't know what account you and I, we will give in heaven by the age and the time that God gave us to build something, to build something. Let's build the church of Christ together. Let's come in fellowship. Let's carry this burden. Let's win souls, amen. Enough of the comfort zones. Let's come out of the comfort zone. Say, Lord, use me for your glory. Use me, Father God, for your glory. Anoint me, Father God. I humble, I surrender. Forgive me of my sins. Even as I take a 360 turn around, Father God, help me, Lord, I want to walk with you. And let me tell you, then your worship will be pleasing to God. Then your every work will be according to the word of God. Amen. And God will come and dwell upon, hallelujah, the praises of his people. Amen. I want to pray and close. Still, I'm not able to see your videos, but I hope you could hear the message well. Amen. I want to pray for you and hand over back, it, back to Pastor Sam Kuti. Amen. Our most loving Heavenly Father. Lord, as a church, we have failed in many areas. Personally, also. At many a time, many a time, being hearers of the word of God and not being doers of the word of God. Many a time you came down to walk with us, but we went our own way and left you behind. Father God, we turn back. Many a time we come to worship, but today, Lord, we ask ourselves a question, is the worship pleasing to you? Forgive us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to come back to you. Have mercy on us. Lord, we want to work for your kingdom. We want to add souls into the kingdom. We want to build something great and massive where many people would come in, where many people would come in, where many people would come in, the brokenhearted, the crushed in the spirit. Amen. The, the, the ones who are about to commit suicide, take us to them, Father God. Take us to them, Father God. Help us, Lord, to go out, hallelujah, and bring those people who are unwanted by the society, rejected by the families, hallelujah, broken, beaten, and thrown out to die. Father God, help us because every soul is important in the kingdom of God. Every person is important in the kingdom of God. Lord, we commit ourselves, Father God. Give us that burden to win souls. Hallelujah. And even as we pray, Father God, and everyone who's praying, Father God, I pray let the anointing come upon them. Break every yoke of the devil, Father God. May they become, Father God, people who work for God, people who worship in spirit and in truth, people, Father God, who carry the word of God 
and win many souls for thy kingdom. Lord, I commit myself before the world. Forgive me also, Lord. Hallelujah. For every shortcomings that we, when we walk into the world, we forget the word. And when we come into the word, we remember the world. Lord, forgive us of the distractions that we carry. Wash us and cleanse us with your precious blood. Help us, Lord, to live this message and to glorify your name. Bless the church. May the church grow. May the people, let there be a revival, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Bless the man of God who is shepherding the church, Father God. Bless his family, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless everyone out there, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank amen. you so much, Pastor. Thank you, church. Amen. God bless you. Once again, remember us in your prayer. Amen. Once again, God bless. Thank you so much.